This is the Grand River in Painesville, Ohio. It's about 27 miles east of Cleveland and runs through northeastern Ohio, eventually draining into Lake Erie. Flooding here isn't too big of an issue. Typically a few times a year a flood warning will go out and some road closures will be necessary. But in 2006, all of the meteorological components came together to produce one of the worst floods in the county's history. Cleveland experiences an average of 2.8 inches of rainfall in July alone. But by July 20th, 2006, over 5 inches of rain had already fallen in northeastern Ohio. And the problem is that saturated soil doesn't absorb more water. Normally, large quantities of water are able to be absorbed by dirt at a rate of about a quarter inch an hour up to two inches an hour. This can accommodate particularly heavy rainfall for short periods of time, but when five inches of rain has already saturated the soil, it can't absorb any more. On top of that, rivers are more likely to flood due to excessive rainfall. On the morning of July 27, 2006, a stationary front was positioned to the northwest of Ohio, while an area of high pressure was positioned over Georgia. Any storms that were to form were to move west to east, which wouldn't really matter if the lake didn't exist. Lake Erie exchanges moisture with the air through something called latent heat flux, and this exchange of moisture is particularly intense in the summer heat. Any storms that moved over the length of Lake Erie were fueled by constant moisture, and to top it all off, southerly winds at the surface streamlined in moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. The storms that day did not rain themselves out, in fact, they only got more intense overnight. Painesville and Fairport Harbor ended up with over 11 inches of rain in the span of those 48 hours. By 3.30 a.m. on the 28th, water had risen over 6 feet in the gristmill and millstone condominiums, forcing residents to their roofs to be rescued. They were taken to Harvey High School, many of which ended up staying there for a week after the flood. Fairport Harbor was practically cut off from the mainland as waters nearly covered the entire Fairport Road Bridge. Although Painesville had the worst of the flooding, many other areas in Lake County had significant damage. Over a foot of water ran through the streets of the Sahara Mobile Home Park in Madison. 122 children and staff members had to be rescued from waist-deep water at a child care center in Menor. In Painesville, a total of 81 homes were destroyed, including all of the gristmill and millstone condominiums. Residents were allowed an hour on July 30th to retrieve whatever belongings they could find, but there wasn't a whole lot left. These buildings sat abandoned until a controlled burn in 2012, and unfortunately I never got to visit. The guys over at Architectural Afterlife compiled a wonderful photo library of the condos before they were demolished. The city raised the remains and turned it into a public park, which I did get to visit. And if you look closely, you can find evidence of where life once stood.